Good morning, good evening, and welcome to this, our little jaunt through bearings. Now, you're going to be looking at me going, hold on a moment, bearings, what's a bearing? Uh, and I'll explain in just a moment. But it seems a little out of place, really, doesn't it? Bearing in mind, we've been dealing with something called right angle triangles. To come to this idea now about bearings. Well, yeah and no. When we deal with right angle triangles, if you remember, we were dealing with angles. And we've either been trying to find angles... Or we've been given angles and trying to find missing side lengths. Because right? missing side lengths are, of course, really important to our life. Right. So why does this whole chapter or section seem to have nothing to do with bearings? Well, there are lots of ways that angles are used in real life. One of the great things I get to do is I develop iPhone apps and Android apps and what have you. And one of the things I did recently was create an app that needed to know where two people were in relation to the surface of the Earth. And that's actually not as easy as it sounds, right? Because the Earth is spherical, but it's not spherical. It's actually sort of a squashed sphere. It's actually some pretty funky maths. But I needed to be able to look at angles of where people were in relation to satellites and all sorts of stuff. Now, you undoubtedly have a mobile phone, which is a very clever piece of information, which is connected to between three and five satellites at any one time. That's exactly how your GPS functionality works. Satellites in the sky are beaming signals and your phone is looking left, right and center and it knows where all of these are. And as such, to a pretty close degree of accuracy, you know, it knows where you are on the Earth's surface. Uh, Tesla, you know, is obviously uh, developing cars at the moment that hopefully will be driving, you know, autonomously, that is, uh, without any human uh, intervention. Um, and it's going to require a huge amount of sort of software to be able to do that. But GPS is going to be incredibly important. Now, actually, something else that your phone needs to do is communicate with your mobile phone provider. So, and I hope this never happens to you, but what if you break down in your car one day and you're like, oh, I have no idea where you are? Well, the great thing is your phone knows where you are, not just for the satellites. So imagine your GPS chip gave out. What actually happens is, and here is a wonderful example, your phone, generally speaking, is in touch with the closest three antennas, right? All three antennas that it can find. And all the way around this country, there are antennas that are communicating with your phone. And it just pings. It sends out a ping and it sort of says, hi, I'm here. Where are you? Who are you? How far away are you? And each of the antennas actually send back a sort of a message. And they say, well, hi, I'm here. And this is how far away I am. And your phone, being really clever, can actually do a little bit of maths. And it goes, well, if I was to draw a circle equal to the radius of the distance from each of the antennas, then when those circles cross over, hello, that's where I am. So if you are ever unfortunate to sort of break down in a car or, you know, require emergency assistance, then your the emergency services people can actually track down where you are. If you go missing, for example, fingers crossed, your phone records will be able to track down, roughly speaking, where you are. It's really, really clever, really. But we move on. So I did the Google search for bearings, and strangely, up came a little diagram with regard to a ball bearing. I thought, well, that doesn't seem very mathematical. Then I saw a bear ring. Lol. See what it did there? Bear ring. No. Anyway. But, no, it has nothing to do with jewellery and has everything to do with angles. Now, never... Eat shredded wheat is one of the ways I remember it uh, because we're in Australia. Never eat soggy wheat bix. And again, randomly, Australia, why in the UK it's called wheat abix? Was that extra letter just too hard? Why do you have to abbreviate everything? I mean, not everything has to be abbreviated. John is perfectly acceptable. Why would you say Jono? It doesn't make any sense. Anyway. So, not only do we have compass bearings, as in that point there, sorry, compass uh, names, north, east, south, and west, we also have these degrees. And actually, it's these degrees here that I'm circling, I'm circling all of them, are actually called bearings. Now, what do you notice? Well, that seems rather strange. Why don't we write it as zero degrees? Well, because, ladies and gentlemen, when we do bearings, all right, and more specifically true bearings, we have to make sure 
that all of them are written with three digits. So you would never write zero degrees, you would write zero, zero, zero degrees. Seven degrees would be zero, zero, seven, I like that, double up seven, shaken, not stirred. And zero, ten degrees, up until the more obvious 120 degrees, but they always have three digits. We also need to keep in mind of these northeast, southeast, east, southeast, and how they all fit in as well. But this is about true bearings. It's about the three digits and how we use them in real life. So what is a bearing? When you bring up Google.com, it says a dictionary definition says the direction or position of something or the direction of movement relative to a fixed point. Now that's really important. It's relative to a fixed point. It is usually measured in degrees and typically with magnetic north as zero. So there we go. What they're saying is normally we do a bearing relative somewhere. So this might call it O for the origin or O for where I am. It is measured with respect to a north line and it's measured in degrees. Now, one thing that's not written is actually it's measured in a clockwise direction. Now, this north and this north line are really, really important. Every diagram you draw with bearings has to, has to have these. And so, here are some examples. Just get rid of some of this. And so, one other thing is it's not just good enough to have an angle. Yes, we know that here I am, O. Yes, we know that we can have some sort of rotation around clockwise. But I would assume if we're actually going to go on a journey, we would need to know how long or how far we actually travel in a particular direction. And here are some examples of some proper bearings. So, 0, 6, 0 for a distance of 1 kilometer. So, if I was to draw a sketch of this, here I am. There is my north line, which I have to automatically draw. 60 degrees is going to be sort of that way. And then I'm going to end up here, again with the north line, because that's my finish point. That's 60 degrees. All right, and as I'm drawing a diagram here, I suppose I can miss out the zero. But that length there would be one kilometer. Now, this is drawn to a scale. All right, there's no way that I'd be able to draw one kilometer on this piece of technology. But... All of these are bearings because they have a angle and a distance. Now, some people say to me, well, what's a true bearing? As I said earlier, a true bearing is always, always with respect to magnetic north. A bearing is actually with respect to the direction you are facing. So if you were just facing, ah, oh, you know, completely randomly, if you were just happened to be facing that way, for example, and said you were going to turn on a bearing of 90 degrees, you would end up facing that way because you've turned 90 degrees. The difference being is your original um, orientation or the direction you were originally looking was not north. Silly, but important. So how do we know uh, whether it's a true bearing or not? Mostly, there'll be a capital T after the actual angle. So again, this is convention. Sometimes people forget, but on the whole, I would always take that bearings are taken with respect to north. As I say here, bearings have some really, really important features, which must, must, must be present in every diagram. So, always, always bearings are drawn with respect to north. I can't say that enough. The number of people who miss off the north lines, you will lose marks. Every time you miss one of those off, you will lose one mark, up until you run out of marks for the question. Bearings are always measured clockwise. So you always measure clockwise, going that way around. And obviously, theoretically speaking, the maximum bearing would be, well, I'll say 360 degrees. By the time you've done 360 degrees, you're actually at zero. So let's say 359.999999999 degrees. It's not normal or would be very strange to have a bearing of 370 degrees massively important that you understand what the word from means. So here's an example. Here is my north line. Here is me at the moment, and let's call that O, and I'm going to end up at the point A, and there is my north line as well. If I know that angle there, for example, is 70 degrees, and I want the bearing of A from O, so A from O, it means you want to put your pen or whatever you have on the point O 
facing north and you're going to turn to face A. Right, so it's A from O. That tells you where you're going to put your pen or where you're going to start. If I was doing A from O, then this is, no, if I was doing O from A, then it is this that I would be starting on, and I'd be saying how many degrees do I need to turn before I am facing O. So that's that dotted line. Now the great thing is here, you actually have co-interior angles. If you look, I know that that angle there is 70 degrees. I know that these two angles must make 100, uh, sorry, yes, 180 degrees, which this now means that has to be 110 degrees. So I can now find this dotted angle, because what do angles in a circle make? They make 360 degrees, which when I take 110 degrees, gives me 250 degrees. So my bearing of O from A would be 250 degrees. This, this one thing here, this one thing here is where people lose so many marks because they always misunderstand what the word from means. Right, I can't show you what I mean by putting your pencil on O or A, but I quite literally lie a pencil starting at the word place where it says from, facing north, and I turn my pencil clockwise until I'm facing the point it wants me to get to. And as I said here, bearings use the Fuzzix rules for angles, co-interior, you know, uh, and all those, those different types of angles. Now, this question I have shamelessly borrowed from Cambridge. Again, it's not meant as a... Um, it's not meant to infringe copyright. It's just a really good example, right? So this looks complex. Let's just try and unpack it. We've got a starting point at A. Now, for some strange reason in this particular instance, they have drawn all of the compass points. I don't think east, south, and west are important. But remember, maths questions can give you more information than they need to. I've obviously traveled along to a point B and then a point C. They've not given me bearings in any of this question. Notice how they've not given me a bearing. They've given me this angle here, which is not a bearing. If it was a bearing, it would be all the way around, starting from the north line. And, believe it or not, what it actually wants me to do is wants to find the distance from A to C. Now, when we look at the distance from A to C, there is a lot of maths they want here. They want bearings. They want triangles. How do you do this? Well, the distance from A to C can actually be done using a right angle triangle. So can you see this right angle triangle here? Yep, well actually, that right angle triangle can be made up in stages of this right angle triangle and this right angle triangle. And you're gonna say, well, how is that possible? Well, if you take this horizontal length and add it to this horizontal length, it just so happens you get that horizontal length. And if you take this vertical height and add it to this vertical height, it just so happens you get the total vertical height. So you have to do sort of two, three calculations actually. You have to find out using trig to find out that height. You do trig to find out that length. You find trig to find that. You do trig to find that. You add together to come up with a whole new triangle. This length is now known, this length is now known, and so because you know that length there, and because you know that length there, you would then use pi fag. Now this is actually, I've seen this on exams, this particular question has been on exams more times than I care to imagine, because it tests so many different things. It tests bearings, it tests pi thag, it tests trig, it tests your understanding. So. If there's ever a question that you want to make sure you get your head around, that's definitely it. Now, remember, and I think Calvin and Hobbes, again, no infringement of copyright uh, uh, intended, but Calvin and Hobbes are fabulous, right? And I think here, he puts it in an incredibly awesome way. But what he's basically saying is, it, there is a huge difference between understanding how to do this and cramming for an exam. Those people who want to do well in methods will actually understand the work. Those who sadly find methods really hard will be the ones who cram. All right, so here are some real world examples that I'll just talk over. Write down the bearing, which is opposite to 0, 30, 
zero three zero degrees true. Ooh, can you work that one out? Well, when it's opposite, what do we know? Well, if we were facing north and I wanted to be facing the opposite direction, I'd want to face south. If I was facing east and I want to go the opposite direction, I want to face west. And what am I doing in each of those cases? I am turning through 180 degrees. And so actually, if I want to write down a bearing which is opposite to that, I would add on 180 degrees, which gives me 210 degrees. True. Silly question, but through a lot of people. Give the true bearing from O to A. So from O, that's where I'm going to start, to A. There you go. That's the bearing we're looking for, from O to A. How do we do that? Well, they've given me this 30 degrees. Hopefully, we know that's a right angle triangle. And I would hope that was 60 degrees. And in this situation, find the true bearing correct to the nearest degree of point A, from O. Now, what do you notice? They've actually given me a right angle triangle here. Uh, okay, and I want a true bearing from O to A, which is actually this angle here. So if I actually zoom in now, well, we know that this is 90 degrees. So that's already part of the bearing worked out for me. All I need to do is work out this bit inside the triangle. And if we draw a quick sketch, what do we know? We know that that's 10 kilometers. That's six kilometers. I don't know what that angle is, but I can use yo trig to find the angle. Once I found that angle, don't get tricked. That is not the bearing because what do you have to do? Well, once you know what theta is, you add on 90 degrees and that will give you your true bearing. Notice how in this particular topic, lots of different things are all beginning to be used at the same time or at lots of areas of maths are being used all at the same time. All right, I'm done. Thanks very much for listening. Oh, I'm not even at the top. I look forward to seeing you for some more later on. All right, have a good day.